I'm Michael Hutton. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer for Neurogenitive Disease here at Eli Lilly. Uh, that means I'm responsible for drug discovery for Alzheimer's disease and related conditions. Uh, I also lead the neuroscience group here at, here at Illwood. I think there's two areas that I'd highlight. Uh, firstly, this site has always had uh, a tremendous history of working on the mechanisms of uh, a synaptic communication and how neurons talk to each other. Um, in the past, that's really been, uh, that's come out in our, in our psychiatry therapeutics. We, of course, with the site that delivered uh, alanzapine, the, um, the treatment that continues to be a treatment for schizophrenia. And that expertise has now been extremely useful. It's been applied to neurology. So we're starting to use that expertise to understand uh, how neuronal transmission is impacted in, in Alzheimer's disease and related conditions. The other area that I mention is our work on, on tau. Uh, tau protein is one of the proteins that deposits in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. And there's a very close relationship between the formation of tau deposits, neurofibrillary tangles, and the progression of symptoms in, in Alzheimer's disease. Um, what our work here is really focused on is obviously developing therapeutics that target tau, but also understanding how that process of tau pathogenesis works. And we've made a number of really significant contributions to our understanding of how this process of tau uh, pathogenesis, the formation of these neurofibrillary tangles, how that actually happened. I think it's still the therapeutics, and obviously uh, we've had a number of high profile setbacks, uh, but I think we still have molecules in our portfolio, in the portfolio of other pharma companies, which I think have a really great chance of showing uh, successful disease modification, so slowing of the progression of, of symptoms. As I say, I think ongoing therapies that target A-beta remain very promising. I think the challenge with the A-beta therapeutics, and in all of our disease-modifying therapeutics for Alzheimer's disease, is going to be a finding the right drug and matching it to the, to the right patient. So in particular for our amyloid therapeutics, we're likely going to need to, to move to very early stage patients to have that effect. But overall, I'm still very optimistic about the promise of our, of our therapeutics. So I think there's two areas that I highlight. Uh, we continue to be very interested in tau. Uh, we delivered uh, Lily's first uh, tau-based therapeutic, uh, which is an antibody which is now in clinical development. Uh, and this site continues to be central to our development of new tau-based therapeutics. And I think that's an area of key progression and development for us. Uh, the other area that's, been, that's very strong here at, uh, at Earlwood, again, utilizing that experience from our from our psychiatry history is the delivery of, of, of new approaches for, um, for improving the symptoms of, of Alzheimer's disease. And that's the other area where, I, I, where we are currently uh, focused on here on, here on site. Uh, I think it's a number of things. Um, firstly, I think everybody that works in this area is focused on improving the lives of, of patients. The massive unmet medical need that you've you've just highlighted won't go away. We need to address that, not just because of the impact on patients, but also because of the impact on on healthcare systems throughout the world. So that's the, the first thing. But I think also, you know, everybody that works in R and D at Lilly, we're we're first and foremost scientists, and so there's a, an interest and excitement about how the brain works, and by extension, what goes wrong when we develop a condition like Alzheimer's disease. So there's also a quest for knowledge to understand how that process works and then of course how we can, we can prevent or modify that in the disease process. So I think in Alzheimer's disease and related conditions we will see successful disease modification, slowing of symptoms within the next five years. I remain very confident of that. Uh, I think beyond that, uh, going out say 15, 20 years, you're going to see essentially similar type approaches to the, say, the A-beta and tau approaches that will deliver those initial breakthroughs, but those molecules will get better. We'll see combinations of therapies being used increasingly, different combinations of A-beta therapeutics, combinations of A-beta and tau therapeutics. And so just as we've seen with the development of treatments for HIV and for cancer, after that initial molecule is, or initial uh, treatment is identified, we can then add on uh, new molecules to further and progressively improve success. I think we'll see that process with Alzheimer's disease as well. 
looking beyond that, of course, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, predict. But I do think we'll start to see the ability to rescue loss function as well. So all of the treatments I've referred to, whether they're amyloid-focused, tau-focused, they'll slow or potentially halt the progression of disease, but they won't allow us to recover function. I think looking further beyond that initial period, uh, I think we are going to see ways in which we can actually rescue the function that has been lost uh, in patients with, with Alzheimer's disease and is related to An amazing place. I mean, you have to just look around you to see what a, a beautiful campus it is, um, the history of the place uh, in terms of the buildings, but also the history from the drug discovery that's occurred. That's all very important to the, uh, to the overall uh, ethos of the place. But ultimately, it's the people. Uh, we have great scientists working here that impact all stages of the drug development process, from the original ident the initial identification of targets, through the chemists who make the molecules, and on through the early development stages, um, we, have, we have people on site that are involved in late stage clinical development and even on the actual uh, the, the commercial aspects of, of, of how we then market a drug to, to staff. So we, we are unique in, in the sense that we represent all that full uh, pr part of the process here, on, uh, here at Irwin. I think on the scientific side, on the R&D side, I think what we do very well here, because we're a small site and indeed a relatively small R&D group, is we're able to interact and collaborate very closely with each other and I think that works very effectively here and that's a very strong reflection on the people that we have on site.